Let's talk about one of the most important and often misunderstood forces moving markets, Delta hedging. As discussed in previous module, market makers act as middlemen in the market. They step in between the buyers and the sellers to keep the transactions flowing. They provide liquidity, all while profiting from the spread. But in doing so, they often take on risks they can't afford. That's where hedging comes in, a way for market makers to protect themselves. Market makers hold a lot of options, and as you may know, the value of an option can swing wildly. During a trading session, option values change due to three main factors. Time decay, volatility changes, and of course, underlying price movements. Let's break them down quickly. So, time decay. As you may know now, options naturally lose value as time passes. This is known as theta decay. If you're holding long options, this slow bleed works against you. Market makers holding long options may try to offset this by selling options to collect premium. But the truth is, you can't fully hedge time decay. You can of course try to manage it, but there's no precise or predictive way used to neutralize it. Now onto volatility. When IV rises, option prices go up. When it drops, they go down. So if a market maker is long vol, rising IV helps, but falling IV hurts. Market makers can hedge IV exposure using products like VIX, swaps, or anything else that can be tied to vol. Again, there are many ways of doing it, and it's outside the scope of today's presentation. What matters here is that Vega hedging is indirect and complex. Now, Delta. Delta measures how sensitive an option is to the changes in the price of the underlying. A move in the stock or index can significantly affect the value of the option. To manage this risk, market makers rely on Delta hedging, the process of buying or selling the underlying asset to stay neutral. Because market makers hold huge option books, these hedging flows can be enormous. They can move the market. When market makers adjust their hedge, they shift supply and demand in the underlying, often creating noticeable price movements. That's why delta hedging matters to traders. It's not just a reaction, it's a force that drives the price. By analyzing where and when these hedging flows are likely to occur, traders can gain a meaningful edge, not by reacting to price moves, but by anticipating them. So, if you can predict these hedging flows, you can anticipate where the market might move next. Delta hedging acts in two phases. Phase one, when a new option trade is executed, the market maker takes the other side, and they must immediately hedge the delta exposure created by that trade. For instance, if a customer sells a call option, the market maker buys that call, which gives them a positive delta exposure. To stay neutral, they sell or short the underlying asset to counterbalance that exposure. Because it happens so fast, right when the order is filled, it's pretty much impossible for outside traders to anticipate. When you see it on the tape, it's too late. So let's visualize it with a concrete example. A customer buys 10 SPX call options, each with a delta of 0.3. Each option controls 100 shares, so the total position delta is 300. The market maker who took the opposite side of that trade is now short 10 calls. His net delta is negative 300. To hedge, he needs to buy 300 shares of the SPX to rebalance the delta exposure. But SPX is not directly tradable, it's an index. So generally they use ES futures. Each ES mini contract covers 50 SPX shares. So they buy six ES contracts to neutralize the delta exposure. And this brings their exposure back to delta neutral. Now on to the phase two. So keep in mind, as we saw previously, delta is not fixed. It changes constantly. As the underlying price moves, time passes by and volatility changes, the delta of each option shifts, so market makers need to adjust their hedge throughout the day. These changes are driven by what we call second order Greeks. Gamma measures how fast delta changes when the price moves, Charm tracks how delta shifts with the passage of time, and Vana shows how delta reacts to change in IV. Now, here's where things get powerful. If you know the market maker's option book, and you could simulate how it responds to changes in price, time, or IV, you'd be able to anticipate your next move. In other words, you'd have a forward-looking view on how the market might react to those changes. Here's the basic logic. If delta increases, 
market maker need to sell the underlying to stay neutral. If delta decreases, they need to buy to rebalance. As a trader, how can you use that? Well, if you can project where delta is headed, you're no longer reacting to the price. You're positioning ahead of the move. Here are key takeaways for traders. Being able to forecast delta hedging flows gives us traders a real tactical edge. By identifying where market makers are heavily exposed, we can anticipate when and where they'll need to buy or sell the underlying, and we can position ourselves ahead of those moves. Keep in mind, it's not about reacting to the market, it's about seeing what's likely to come next. In the next module, we'll dive into the second order Greeks, like Gamma, Charm, and Vana, and show you how they can help forecast market maker responses with greater precision. Understanding these layers will take review of the market one step ahead.